Hi, uh, please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Joe Speed with the Ampere Computing. And uh, this is your chip right here. This is uh, this is doing a lot of noise in the industry right now. <laughs> what is what it, are you looking at? It is. It's a 128 core CPU with 128 PCIe lanes. And these are used in everything from uh, Google Cloud to uh, to vehicles and 5G base stations. And um, so it's a big chip, it's a lot of cores, and it's also a lot of performance. Yeah, it's a lot of performance, but it's a lot of efficiency. So this is uh, three times the performance per watt of x86, like legacy architectures. Three times? Mm -hmm. That's a lot. Quite a bit, yes. That's like a big shift. And here at the Embedder World, the argument is that you want to bring this to the edge. That means yes. potentially billions or millions of devices. We would, we would settle for millions. Millions would be OK. That's millions of base stations, 5G? Yeah, so it? 5G base stations, uh, smart city, uh, industrial automation, um, mill aero, and all kinds of other applications. What, what are we looking at here? Maybe uh, you can yeah. explain. What is this? So this is so this is a uh, an industrial PC. So this is a fanless, ruggedized industrial PC with the Ampere processor and with uh, optional NVIDIA GPU. So you can have a Ampere CPU with your NVIDIA Ampere GPU. Uh, this is a full contained, self-contained, uh, the whole thing is Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. And then this, this is a AI computer for autonomous race cars. Autonomous race cars. Yes. So soon Formula One uh, will be uh, uh, robots. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll see. The, uh, but it's not really, It's people ask sometimes, like, is it about humans uh, competing against machines? It's actually... Um, uh, so, I, I've been a long time involved with a program called the India Autonomous Challenge, and uh, these aren't in the vehicles yet. Um, we want to work with our friends DSpace to um, put Ampere into theirs, and they, um, and uh, so it's a university software contest. Uh, when you put a 128 core in a car, you get a lot of potential self-driving happening in there? Well, it, it's really a software problem, but we, we, we help. We do our part. Uh, because uh, is that also the market for this, this one, going to cars? Uh, so probably not all the cars, but I think it's very good for R&D fleets, for specialty vehicles, um, autonomous people movers, uh, earth moving, mining, agriculture, things like that. Um, can you hold this board oh, sure. and try to explain what are we seeing on this on this board? So, so this so this launched here uh, today. So this is a dev kit. This is the Ampere Ultra Dev Kit. It's made by our friends at AD Link, and you can visit them over in Hall Three. And it comes with um, the memory, the heat sink, uh, storage, um, really all the things you need to do to, like if you're making uh, devices, okay, and things, and you need to develop device drivers and test them, or you need to see how easily your software can port to this architecture, this is the kind of thing that you would use. Uh, what do you connect here? Uh, so this is three PCI by 16, so you could, for example, put um, like two uh, full length, full height NVIDIA GPUs plus a, a camera frame frame grabber. Three GPUs. And well, you, can you could. Yes, all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Plus two what? Uh, this is uh, two PCIe by, I think, four or eight. I don't know, I have to check. The uh, So you could put like uh, NICs, network, inter network cards, and other things. And what's connect up here? Oh, so we have more. Um, uh, giggy, giggy, USB, VGA, serial, just normal things. Nothing, nothing exotic. Yeah, it's we we kind of work hard to make the arm as boring and painless as x86 is in the data center. It's been a decade-long uh, work, work yes. in progress to optimize yeah. the arm yep. for servers. And now, yes. would you say it's 100% fully smooth? and actually even smoother than other architectures? 
Uh, I don't know if it's smoother, but it's widely deployed. You look at um, the Oracle Cloud, Azure Cloud, Google Cloud, uh, people like Hetzner, Equinix. You look at products from people like HPE and Supermicro. It's very much mainstream now. You know, people really want, they want the density, they want the cost savings, they want the energy savings, they want to figure out how do they make their compute footprint green and sustainable and reduce the carbon impact. And so we help with all of those things. And now we're bringing those same benefits to the edge. If I go on Google Cloud or Azure, I can click and I can get yeah, an yeah, Ampere yeah. instance. Oh, sure. And it's yes. great to work with. Mm -hmm. And it's good price. Compared yes, to some yes, of the other and the Oracle Cloud, um, they've been doing impressive things. They're running like large scale, heavy AI workloads on Ampere, on the Oracle Cloud. So that's pretty interesting as well. And here you, you are, um, I was seeing right here, there was some, uh, no, right here. These are the, oh, sorry, the different booths, booths where you are, uh, AdLink, uh, AWS also, Automotive. Yeah, so the AWS Automotive, if you look at the Yocto project, so the Yocto project uh, is using Ampere for all the things they're demonstrating there in the booth, um, working with AWS Cloud and with the other Yocto project members. When I hear about Yocto, I, I think about small stuff, right? But it goes all the way to 128 <laughs> yeah, core? Yeah, yeah, Yocto has grown up. So it's, it's happy to work all the way up? Yes, yes, very much. What's the challenge uh, when you make software and you want, to you want to use so many cores? You need to be very good at parallel so processing in your actually, software? Actually, you know, in the open source community, a lot of people are taking that care of that for you. So you've got um, so many workloads that are being developed for the cloud, and by their nature, they tend to scale out across many cores. And so any of that software that's designed to scale out across many servers is very happy running in one SOC using all 128 cores. Uh, one thing that I guess is a challenge, but it's hard to talk about, is the price of a chip. But that's not the main question, right? Is the price of the power to run the chip? That's sure. The main so there's right? a few things. So there's like, you can look at things like performance per dollar. You can look at total cost to ownership. Um, you know, for the data centers, the exercise is how can I get more compute per rack while using less power, okay? And then you save so much. Well, now we're bringing those same kinds of benefits to the edge, where if I can get more compute into a device and use less power, you know, that's very good, right? Before you said 3X. Yeah. And that was um, power per... Uh, performance per watt. Performance per watt. Yep. But also it's if also you look at things... also dollars? Oh, uh, yeah. When you look at the TCO, sure. The, um, and that was also looking at things like, you know, how much compute per rack, uh, or how much compute per device, okay, that I can get in the same power budget. So there's two ways to think of it. I can get triple the compute for the same power budget, or for the same compute, I can get using only one third the same uh, power. And so that's a really big savings, and that lets you make very powerful devices that really don't use that much electricity. So that's, that's a great benefit. So we see, you know, for like 5G base stations, um, uh, there's like 30 companies working around 5G base station software accelerators, the whole stack integrated, and they're using our processor in that. I, I, I like watching these weird videos on YouTube with people customizing vans, and they have huge Tesla power walls in their van, yeah, and yeah, they yeah. have a whole bunch of power. Maybe they could be driving around with the little base stations. <laughs> and when there's an event, they go and add 5G capacity sure, at sure. the same time as, you know, they sleep in a van or something. Maybe yeah. this is this kind of stuff maybe that could go in a van. Yeah, yeah, definitely so. There's uh, people making some small, powerful things with us. And, and uh, the benchmarks I've seen around like 5G base stations is moving from x86 to Ampere. For the same power, they're getting double the throughput. Could you use a Starlink and make a 5G base station out of the Starlink connection, I guess, maybe? And then I, suddenly, oh, it's just, I don't know, it's yeah. a weird question. Okay, uh, and here with a seven Starlink, right? Yeah. It's partnership and doing, what kind of work are they doing with you? 
Yeah, so they they work with um, our other partners, uh, people like um, 80 Link and Gigabyte and Supermicro around um, taking these compute modules and motherboards with the Ampere processor and making these uh, rugged, extreme rugged, frankly, um, compute for different kinds of applications. So, you know, think like uh, buses, trains, ships, subs, all kinds of things. Wow. What happens when you put this on the bus? Uh, you're able to do more using less power. So if you want to do like a safety or traffic safety with cameras, um, you can do all kinds of interesting things. There could be cameras inside the bus, make yeah. sure everybody's, I don't know, I'm not going to say distancing, <laughs> but they're all comfortable. Everybody's getting yeah. what they want. Yeah, yeah. And they get a VIP service on the bus maybe, or uh, are these um, kind of like development boxes or? No, they're these are, made this is for development. These are very much for production deployments. So they're actually uh, made by 7 Starlink. Starlink. Yep. Seven Starlink make, what's the difference between this and this? I uh, see more cooling. So it's yeah, because so it's a GPU? What this has, is you see the two fans, the fans, this is sealed, but the two fans blow air across the fins. So it has more cooling, so you can put um, a more powerful processor and a more powerful GPU. Cool. All right. Uh, so you you were at the Mobile World Congress. It was a big story, right? To yeah. to to run the base stations. Mm -hmm. uh, you're all about doing that, and there's a big demand for that. Yes. And here, the Embedded World is this different kind of demand. Yeah. Um, the it's a different domain, a different application, but some similar challenges. So what's happening is you're getting more and more sensors, and the sensors are becoming higher and higher bandwidth, and the communications is becoming higher bandwidth. And so the challenge, but you don't always have, you might be constrained, you might have a fixed amount of physical size, weight, and power, so the swap available for your application, so it becomes this issue of how do I get more compute into my existing size, weight, and power. All right, so it's very relevant for everybody here who look for being at the extreme edge. Yes. Uh, like the, <laughs> the high performance edge. Exactly. And yeah, and we, you know, we don't do, everyone talks about the 128 core, but we also go down to, you know, 32 core, right, with below 40 watt. So, you know, we can actually cover a pretty wide range of compute requirements and power budgets, but even at 32 core, we're giving you 128 PCIe lanes. So, all of your I.O. So, if you need to do like portable NAS, or any other kind of application that's really demanding, or CDNs, that's a popular application for these. Uh, you can, we have some very, um, we have some much lower power, highly efficient uh, parts that you can use for that as well. And I guess there's a lot of partnerships in the software world, not just Yocto? Yeah, yeah, so um, uh, we do a ton with like Canonical, with Red Hat, with a lot of ISVs. We give heavily to the open source community. So we have hundreds of engineers who contribute to open source full, full time. So we have open source um, BMC, uh, open source firmware, so the ED, uh, Tianacore, EDK2, um, OpenBMC, all these kinds of things. And, uh, and a lot of upstream contributions to things like GCC and LLVM. So all the work that the guys at Linaro and elsewhere have been working on for for decades, yeah, yeah, yeah. able to take all this and improve and give back to everybody. Well, I, I wouldn't even say we take it, we just contribute upstream, we're just trying to help the community and help everything so you get this painless out of the box experience, okay, and everything just works. All right. But even though it just works, it's still a challenge to learn how to use so much parallel processing. Or is that just something that everybody that works in the cloud knows how to do? Yeah, it's, um, and it's not necessarily uh, just about like, how do I get one process, one workload to use 120 core? You have a lot of mixed. So think about if you do a robot, okay? You've got perception pipeline, path planning, control. You have all of these different workloads and being able to run them all on the same SOC, which in the past, maybe it was, you would need many separate computers. So if you have an application that today is requiring many separate computers, you can collapse that into one chip. And I guess your colleagues are very busy on the next gen. 
and getting smaller yeah, and smaller so nanometers and everything? We, there, so there's a new product that will be announced at some point, um, but it's not it's not a matter of like this is V1 and that's V2. That actually has some you know interesting characteristics, and uh, so this is you know for the edge for um, for these kinds of things, this is very compelling. Nice, that's awesome, and. Uh, Eventually, maybe even the governments will get involved and start saying, "Hey, uh, cloud is a certain part of our energy consumption in the in the country, in the cities." And they would start saying, "I'm not going to say they're going to mandate mm -hmm. our servers, but they're going to tell everybody to be conscious and use less power." Yeah, so, so I, I certainly won't pretend to speak for government policy or any of those things. Um, I will say that we help companies do more with the existing data centers and minimize their impact on the local communities. Cool. All right. Thanks a lot. Hey, Thanks. real pleasure. Thank you.